and I just want to thank you. I'm going to introduce Michelin Snively to this amazing show. So, All right, thanks. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming out. I really appreciate uh, you coming out. Um, and thanks to Christina and Studio 2880 because uh, she pitched this to me back in May. And it, um, I think it kind of lent itself to the name of the show, Scattered Views, because while I had a body of work prepared, I'll, all of a sudden I was like, I have to have a body of work prepared. So um, I guess I'm going to give you a little bit of a background about myself first before I dive into talking about the show, because some people may not know where I come from and why I'm here. Uh, I moved to Mackenzie, BC, that's where I'm currently living, uh, about 27 years ago. And um, I moved there for a forestry job for four months. I met my husband and I never left. So I worked in the forest industry for about 20 years in about oh, a few different positions. And in 2016, well, actually, I'll back up a little bit. Prior to moving to Mackenzie, I earned a fine arts degree from the University of Alberta. Um, and then I earned the forest tech diploma from Nate, and that's what got me here. So in 2016, I had a head injury in late 2016, and that changed things. It shifted me out of the forestry work. After a few years of being in long-term disability, um, I exited, decided I was not going to continue with the work that I was doing before, and start a career as a full-time artist. Um, and then it was in 2020, I did a self-employment program with the Community Futures, which was fantastic. It allowed me to start working as a business person, understand how to run a business, and it's really helped move being an artist um, forward. So when that ended in early 2021, that was when I really started knuckling down as far as being an artist um, and figuring out where this was all going to go. So um, I guess speaking, um, I put the paintings up in chronological order as to when the photography was captured. Um, it just made sense to me to go through that uh, chronology of where I was at initially to moving to 2021 or 2022 progressing to 2023, which is sort of getting into the latter part with those few um, paintings there. So um, I started venturing out a lot more to the various lakes around Mackenzie, BC. Um, all of these lakes are actually quite close to Mackenzie. Uh, Morphe Lake is the main one. Uh, Ganahaz Lake, which is this particular view and um, the other one here. Uh, is a lake just a small lake just north of Mackenzie and then there is Williston Lake which is the one in the upper right hand corner and uh, sort of just getting a quintessential view of what a reservoir looks like in low water but I love the place and it's quite pretty um, so yeah in 2021 summer 2021 I decided I was venturing out a lot more I had to get accustomed to pushing myself, um, getting used to activities I used to do, um, getting behind the wheel of a car. And I was really tired of being around trails. That was primarily what I was doing because I was avoiding light. So I was in the trees a lot and I realized that the only way I'm gonna start pushing light sensitivity and those types of things was to get myself into other places. So. I chose the lakes. It was an easy place for me to go with my dogs. I could throw ball. I could start looking at the landscape and saying, what is it about this place that I really like and what is it that I want to paint? So I, um, a few of these places, um, these two are in the Morphe Lake area. Um, that's at the north end of Morphe Lake, the wetland. There's um, Morphe Mountain Road actually passes by this location, so it's a pretty, lo pretty popular location for everybody to go and check out. And this is at a location, uh, what we call Second Beach. And uh, uh, where do I go from there? <laughs> it's one of those things where I want to tell you about why I went to these places but also why I chose to paint them the way I did and what was appealing to me. So 
I think I'm just going to shift into just talking about the artwork and what was it that was appealing. Um, coming from a forestry background, I've learned a lot of things about geomorphology, obviously growth of trees, um, hydrology, those types of things that you just get exposed to in that line of work. So um, coming from a, when I studied at the University of Alberta, I studied abstract wood sculpture and life drawing. And I've always had this thing about form and space that I quite enjoy. It was from some of the artists that I had studied back in university, such as Anthony Caro. And he was, he's a, he was a sculptor. And I've always had that in my brain about creating a sense of space um, within a landscape environment. So when I was out in these locations, um, the form of the land, the hills, um, I was just checking them out mainly out of geekery of analyzing them, but also going, there's some really nice perspective that's going on. Um, it's creating a, a sense of, it's, I found it easier to create a sense of space by going for that strong perspective going into the background by having um, more detail in the front. And um, I found that as time went on, that was the type of composition I've been drawn to. So I think it's pretty consistent with the majority of the pictures is taking you from that foreground where the person is situated to going off into the distance and just getting a real sense of space. And uh, I've had a couple of interviews with some, some fellows over the last two days and it's helped articulate, I think, in my brain what it is I was trying to achieve here. And I was in those spaces, they were doing something for me at the time, and I just really wanted to replicate that feel of being in that location. And inevitably, I'm hoping that the viewer gets a sense of being in that space as well. So, um, but yeah, going out to these areas really pushed me and um, I'm ever so grateful for going out to them because it allowed me to rediscover some really pretty places that I really hadn't spent a lot of time checking out. I'm a trail person, I love being on trails, so uh, being around the water was sort of a newfound um, experience and it's been quite enjoyable. Um, and I'd like to just speak about water smart weed because I've become a bit of a geek about the plant. I was just something about such a a plant that just grows in patches throughout the waterways of, or, or throughout uh, Morphe Lake. I know that the moose really like it because they just chow down on the stuff, but it was these flowers that really caught my attention in 2021. Um, this little patch here in Morphe Lake grows off to the ed edge of um, Second Beach area. And it, one day I was out there with the dogs and I'm like, what's going on over there? Like, what kind of plant is that? So it's just, I like the structure. I like how it bobs on the water. And so I've been captivated to, uh, to paint that, that flower, paint that plant a fair bit. Um, <clears throat> but I'll move on to the next few paintings. In late 2021, uh, 2022, I started um, going out to Ganahaz, a few different places where I hadn't normally gone. And just, I guess, taking that opportunity of paying attention, getting more into the swing of things, of saying, okay, I have to pay attention to the weather, I have to pay attention to what's going on to make sure I'm going to get out and capture imagery that's appealing to me to paint. And uh, that's really where these paintings started coming into play, was making more of a concerted effort, because coming back to that name of the show, Scattered Views, um, like truly, I felt scattered. It was like, I'm just going out when I feel good or if I have to take the dogs out to get them exercised. And it just like, hopefully the weather's gonna be nice or there's going to be something atmospheric going on that's going to be appealing that I want to photograph. Um, and I just got better at planning myself out and going, okay, you're going to go out at this time of the day. And that was the nice thing actually backing up to these ones because I'd spent so much time there 
<clears throat> excuse me, um, I really got a, started getting a sense of the light and how it played on the landscape and how the landscape changed. Um, so it just kind of gives you that sort of um, experience and uh, um, just knowing, okay, be more strategic in, in how you're approaching um, capturing the imagery. In 2022, though, um, because I had been spending so much time just at the shoreline capturing this imagery, I started bushwhacking to the shoreline in different locations because like, okay, I got to vary this up. I got to find different views. I got quite tired of it and I wasn't finding myself being terribly successful either. It was just, it was fun going out there with the dogs and venturing around, but it's like, I'm not getting any imagery that I much care for. So my husband and I, we purchased a drone and that has been a lot of fun and it just changes the perspective. And that's where this painting comes into play of um, just flying the drone, learning so much about elevation, camera tilt, and basically what is it about the landscape that I'm discovering and that I really enjoy. Um, and also in 2022, I bought myself a lightweight kayak, which for the same reasons has made getting out and capturing imagery um, so much easier and so much more diverse than, uh, than just sticking around to the shoreline. So um, I'm not quite sure where to go from there, but um, so in 2023, um, I have been more selective about when I'm going out and the imagery I'm capturing. This one was take the photo um, that I worked from was taken by my husband. So this is kind of a, I would say a tribute to him for going through everything that we've gone through over the last seven years. So, and I'm just always grateful whenever he takes a photograph. So, and that one was, was quite appealing. Um, and then uh, this fall, it's, we, well, as you guys know, there's just been a lot of wildfire smoke. It's, it's hard to escape. And uh, getting out on a day when it's clear is even more challenging. So went out with a couple of friends on this particular morning and we almost didn't go out because the smoke was quite suffocating at that time. But the sun got a little bit higher in the sky and it cleared up a bit and we went out for a boat ride. And it's just one of those things where you're just paddling around and it's like, oh, I like that view. So it's, um, I think that's just a, a way of saying, well, the reservoir is just a really interesting place. It's a mo highly modified landscape and it's one that I think could be viewed as ugly, but I don't view it as being ugly. It's just, this is the world we live in and the colors were just really soft and beautiful on that particular day. So um, I just really wanted to, I guess in a way, pay tribute also to this is where I live. That, that Williston Lake is significant in terms of Mackenzie and our lives and forestry and whatnot. So um, that was how that one came into being. And then this, this is what I would call the, the last painting out of the series because it's the last image I, I captured. And that was in the fall. And this is where I'm gonna bring in the Federation of Canadian Artists because we have a show in, I think, July of 2024 in Terrace, and the name of it is called Connections. So if I can paraphrase what I recall of the write-up, it's essentially when you have something that's almost been lost and you're recognizing that you're about to lose it, it just, it's, it, it, well, it connects to me in terms of this whole story of getting to this point. Um, and I saw this particular site. I was, I was paddling around in a particular area and it was like, I'm heading back to shoreline now. And I happened to look off to my right and I saw these reflections. And what was happening on that particular day was that there was this massive plume of smoke that was just traveling over the south of town in the lake. And it was quite, it, it just created all of these reflections in the water of where the plume was in the sky and then there were these tendrils of smoke that were feeding off of it and blocking the sun and creating those colors. And it's like, I'm always doing these views with these strong 
sense of space. And at this point in time, I just want to be more introspective and just paint something that has just a pretty medley of colors. Um, or at least I think they're pretty medley of colors, but that's my style. Um, and But it was also taking that um, connections into perspective that at least with that painting, when you're going through recovery of a head injury, or at least in my, my case, there's going to be darkness that's coming in. You're, you're dealing with emotions. You're dealing with loss. But there's always a beacon of light out there. Like, there's always something to grab onto. And then, of course, there's just a whole medley of things that come in between. So that's how that one uh, resonates with me and it does make me a little bit emotional <laughs> so I'll just back away from that one now but I just so it's it's been an evolution of looking at the landscape and well and it still is but it's it's been a journey of assessing the landscape finding out what appeals to me um, but also again creating that sense of space for people and if they find calmness there, if they find peace uh, or whatever feeling um, that they connect to, then to me that's a success of um, what, what, what I've tried to put into the paintings and uh, hoping that somebody else is, is going to feel the same thing. So um, one of the things I hadn't really planned on talking about with these paintings was how I put them together and it was Christina who kind of nudged me there because she's like, you should talk about your paintings and what your process is. Um, and I don't, like personally, I don't think it, it, I guess quality has been at the top of my list in terms of how I create a painting. Um, I figure if people are gonna put out some money to buy something, I want to make it be the best product that it can possibly be. So I do spend the time to seal up the substrates, uh, whether it's panel or cradled wood panel or the one canvas, um, using just, I have a real problem with oil. Well, I don't enjoy when oil paints sink into your gesso layer. So I'm trying to keep that from happening. And what I found was when I started doing that, which was already a few years ago um, or so ago, was that the paint stays on top. It doesn't sink. You get to continue to read what those colors are that you're putting on layer after layer. And um, I guess it just ended up resonating like, okay, this is, uh, this is working out a lot better for me. So, and just using, I guess, the best quality paints that I can afford um, to create the paintings. Um, but I've sort of ripped through that a lot quicker than I expected in terms of the talk. So I welcome questions because I know that there's probably a lot more I can say, but um, I have a group of people sitting in front of me, so. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Andrew. Well, first of all, thank you. This is beautiful. You're um, welcome. Thanks. Um, but I've seen like your work on uh, social media. And mm -hmm. it's, it, was, it seems like all your work you're doing um, resides like, um, grayscale paintings underneath. Mm, right. Um, so do you do that with every single one? Like you're just working on your tones first? Um, do you ever go directly to color? I've, I've varied it up um, just out of experimentation and learning as an artist. But what I've found is when I do like a grayscale underpainting, so yeah, thank you for bringing that up because it helps contribute to this. Um, yeah, there, there, I will do a grayscale painting as my underpainting um, more times than not because I do want to work out those values. And I find when I work out those values, it, it makes it so much easier to start applying color. I've already mapped it out and, and it just makes it easier for mixing colors and understanding what has to happen. But at other times, I've done... Um, I don't know how to say it. I've, I've gone with like other colors. I've just either done 
chosen a particular color and either done a monochromatic type painting underneath. But uh, it's more of just testing it out and seeing how, how will it affect the remainder of the painting. And I had one, obviously it's not pictured here, but there was a flower painting I had done um, last year. And I was being experimental there because it's, it, was, it was purple flowers with a green background and I decided, okay, I'm going complementary with my underpainting. So the flowers were yellow, the leaves were red, and I actually found that quite exciting to work on afterwards. It was just a different way to sort of put it down and experiment, really. So. Pardon me? Yeah, usually um, I, I have it because the perspective is so important to me and definitely the feel of water uh, movement, I will grid out the substrate and the photograph and, and then I'll draw it on there. Um, it usually sometimes it looks pretty tight with the drawing and sometimes I try to keep it a lot looser. But I don't get too caught up. I've, I've learned to let go on f being true to that drawing underneath where it's like, no, because you're going to get subsequent paints, it's going to shift and then it'll come all together in the end. And I think that's what I've learned as an artist and just being calm about how a painting evolves is like, don't stress out about it. If it's not working out at layer one or layer two, layer three or layer four, it's going to come together. And, and it's because you're just constantly playing with the color, the color relationships, uh, what the mark making is, how does it help create the scene that's going on. Yeah. You're welcome. You didn't talk about the one in the snow um, Michelin, did you? The, what's the, the story behind that? The grass over the rocks? Um, this one right here? Yeah. Yeah, the, um, the beaver house, that day was a deliberate day. I was like, okay, I'm going out and finding swans. Because <laughs> Andrea was painting swans at the time, as were, I think, Pat Gauthier was painting swans. And I'm like, I want to paint swans too. <laughs> I couldn't find any swans. Actually, no, there was a swan, but he was like, right there and just this little white speck and I thought that ain't going to make the painting if I just put this little white speck in there. So um, so the swans didn't happen but as, as I was walking down the road I was just keeping my eye open and then all of a sudden the composition just appeared like it was just the way the reeds and their patches just led into that area back there and it was like yeah I want to paint that. So essentially that's how that one came about. And, um, but it kind of, like, I haven't gone into it with each painting as to how they resonate from, I guess, a recovery perspective. But there's always something psychological going on with each painting that, um, I mean, sometimes it's deeply personal, do you want to talk about or whatever, because it's sharing feelings about what you're going through in your life at the time, but that one there, it just, it was almost like a duality of, it's springtime, things are opening up, we're refreshed, we're heading into a new season, but yet there's barricades. And there's a barricade back there, there's barricade with soft snow that you can no longer be supported by, so I think at that time, that painting resonated with, I'm moving forward, but there's still a lot of limitations going on. And there's, and in some way or another, um, that, that comes into play with some of the paintings. Like inevitably, I've thought about my situation and I've either purposely or it's just naturally um, painted it in there somehow of what that feeling was that I was experiencing at the time. Um, when I captured that one, I had been observing storms on the radar, on Environment Canada's radar, because it was like, 
the colors are so beautiful out there right now and it's stormy and I'm gonna get something nice I bet so I saw what was going on it's like what the heck I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna take my dog out and we're gonna go check this out and I'm really glad I did but it, when I painted that it was like there's storms going on <laughs> in your own brain right and and that tree just really kind of stuck with me of the tree against the storm and that you're just you might feel like you're fighting something but at the same time it's taking strength in who you are as a person and knowing that you have to weather some storms and to roll with it and uh, that's kind of where that one came into play there so and then I'd say Pretty much the rest of them is just looking for a sense of peace, finding quietude in the landscape or, or being in an environment and having your, you know, standing in the water, the water lapping against your legs and feeling the warmth of the day and just enjoying being there. <laughs>